Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host for today, Jacques Hingson Compton, and with me is the Director of Sports in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Mr. Patrick Mathre, who is actually no stranger to the program. He's been on before. Uh, but today we actually want to talk about the history of the sports sector and the Ministry of Sports in St. Lucia. So that's what we're going to spend the next 30 minutes talking about. Uh, welcome, Mr. Mathre. Thank you very much. It's always a bit a pleasure. And once um, I'm able to, to just speak journey to the public, to speak to you about sports, because it's my passion. Mm -hmm. it, yes, of, of course it is. Uh, so first, before we get into the history, I just want you to, even though you've spoken about it before, just speak a little bit about the role of the Department of Sports. Okay, as, as anything as the, the Department of Sports, as I want you well imagine, is a government bureaucracy, which is, is um, has a responsibility to channel sports in a particular direction. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say channel sports, I'm not speaking of you forcing your way into it, but to allow or more or less facilitate the development of sport or the sporting sector. Mm -hmm. um, that would necessarily mean national associations, it would necessarily mean sponsors, it would necessarily mean the athletes, but persons within the sporting fraternity to give it a level of direction because as you would expect, if, if, if you don't have a, a, a plan or a set direction, it would be total chaos. Mm. So. Okay, so let's now dive into the history. What year was the ministry, for the department, sorry, of, of sports first created and why? Well, it's interesting because as we grew as a population, um, it was necessary for us to, to look at the various sectors and governments change from time. So it was a deliberate policy of the government. And so um, about 1980, there about, mm -hmm. um, what, what happened before within the ministries, there was no sports, min there was no sports ministry, mm -hmm. there was no sports department. Mm -hmm. What you had was a department of community development. Um, mm -hmm. And the, in, within the department of community development, or, it was felt at the time, and the, the, the minister of sports at the time was Honorable the late um, John Odlam. Mm -hmm. And it was his vision because he had a lot of ties with Cuba and he saw what they were doing in terms of sports. And he felt it was necessary to do something more in terms of the development of sports. And so around that time, 19, 1980, thereabout, they created a, a, in the ministry a sports unit. I want to call it a unit. Um, and that unit was staffed by one individual. Mr. Mm -hmm. Andrew Maglaw, who was uh, a community development officer, senior community development officer at the time, became the senior community development officer with the responsibility for sports. Mm -hmm. And so Mr. Maguire now was the one who was charged with the responsibility of developing the whole issue of sports. And I think it started by putting together um, youth and sports officers. And so you are a number of youth and sports officers were hired. You had, um, for instance, if my memory serves me well, um, the Honorable Fortuna Belrose mm -hmm. was a youth and sports officer. She was officer. a youth and sports, she officer. Was a youth and sports okay. officer. You had Mr. Victor Reed, mm -hmm. um, youth and sports officer, is now general secretary at the Football Association. Mm -hmm. And also um, Winston Lubin out of Viewfort. He was another one of the, of the officers. So those were the persons who started off as youth and mm. sports officers within the ministry. Later on, you had the likes of, of um, the, um, Leonard Montout, Spider. Mm -hmm. He too was a youth and sports officer. Mm. Um, you have persons like Anselma Cauldron. She mm. was a youth and sports officer. Ligores Mackey, Claudia, um, Claudia Noel, um, now Claudia Jabatis. Mm -hmm. um, all of those persons were, were part of the history of youth and sports. Mm -hmm. And so um, they came later on, but that very initial, the initial stage was, was, was the youth and sports, those three youth and sports officers. Um, and even then, it was, it was always difficult to, to um, try and cover the entire island. So right. at that point in time, the 1980, mm -hmm. 82, thereabout, that is why they came up with the concept of the youth and sports concern. So the, the youth and sports so youth council, and sport. council okay. mm -hmm. um, was a brainchild of the of the then department or unit of the of, of sports because they felt a good way 
to reach out to the number of clubs that were around the island was to, to, to group them in a particular way. Mm -hmm. And so what, you, what was developed was the concept of the Youth and Sports Council mm -hmm. and then officers would be responsible for groups of Youth and Sports Council mm -hmm. to make the work easier and to move on. So did you um, sort of divide the country into, was it different constituencies or? or? We, we, we tried at the, at the time, the, and, and, and as I spoke to Mr. Maguan later on, we tried mm. to stay away from the issue of constituencies mm. um, because we didn't want it to be um, political in any way. And so one of, one of the things that we did was to, um, to, to divide the country based on regions. Mm -hmm. And so you had the Sufre region. Right. Um, they, they, in sometimes they look like um, um, constituencies, but they, 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 they are really not. It's really um, geographical areas. Mm -hmm. And so it's based on those geographical areas um, persons were able to, to, to work. Uh, and so you had the, the, the um, when it was first formed, there were 17 con um, um, youth and sports councils. And later on, because Ansler Canaries was one. Right. And then later on, Ansler was broken up because you had the Rosa Valley. Mm -hmm. And so the Rosa Valley Youth and Sports Council came to being. Um, then afterwards, you, you had Miku. Miku was one also. And then you had the Miku, um, 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 Deriso, breaking away from Miku. And you have the Deriso Youth and Sports Council. Mm -hmm. um, now, even now, you have other things now because now you have... Um, we have gone down the lines almost politically now, which, which I, I think it's, 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 it may have its, 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 its rationale behind, mm -hmm. because I don't know if the thinking now is to, to look at local government right. and what's happening with local government. But now you have, for instance, the Grizzly North and Grizzly South Youth and Sports Council. You have the Castries East Youth and Sports Council. Mm -hmm. um, South yeah. Castries has not broken up because South Castries is both Castries South and Castries South East. Right. So we still have large large area and, and I, I want to believe that the jury is still out on that because I am not sure that dividing it politically is the best thing mm -hmm. um, but again like I said the jury is still out on that and I believe that what you can do is to, to organize this structure in such a way that other persons within the, the, the district could for instance South Castries have a first vice president responsible for South, have mm -hmm. a, a first vice president, uh, a, vice, a vice president responsible for, for um, the Southeast that would suffice in rather than breaking it up and making it look very political. Right. And once you <laughs> start to do that, of course, you have a certain sector who just not come in at all. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I, after that, after the whole um, department and start to evolve, we start to evolve in terms of where we were going, what we were doing, and the programming started. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think that in the initial stage, the, the, the ministry then was trying to get persons to understand the value of sports mm -hmm. and what how we could develop and for us to become part of the international fraternity. Um, and so now this is exactly one of the things that we, 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 we were doing. That um, the, I, I want to say that in terms of the, the uh, history, that if I were to, to look at, at, at um, how we develop, I would put it into phases. And I would say that after the initial stage, where at that point, at about 1983, 84, um, thereabout, is, is when we start to see that first phase of sports development. Incidentally, it is about that time that we, we, the National Youth Council was formed in 1985. Mm -hmm. And that ministry was very mm -hmm. instrumental in, in, in doing the, the whole development of youth and sports. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but we had to talk about um, sports. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have to mention you, unfortunately, because, right. or fortunately, because that's part of that, <laughs> that whole mix-up too. Um, but that is when we started to see things develop differently. Mm -hmm. And the plan was, at the time, get involved at the regional and international level. And I mm -hmm. think that was the second phase I, of our own sporting development, where we started to reach out to the national, in the international community and to the regional community. Um, that is when, for instance, around that time that St. Lucia be, started to make um, um, overtures to be part of the St. Lucia, um, the National International Olympic Committee. Mm -hmm. um, that is where we saw a, a, a massive development in football, for instance, because um, before that you had the clubs playing, then of course the districts with a friendly rivalry, mm -hmm. um, then came the Mackerson Cup, which was rivalry again, mm -hmm. and then Around that time, somewhere about nine, the 19, early 90s, that's where you f what was formed was a united front called the St. Lucia Football Union. 
Mm -hmm. So it was not the association, it was a union. Was a union. So Castries and um, a few teams from Castries, not necessarily Castries Central, a few teams from Castries, Viewfort, Sufre, they came and they put the, the union together. And later on, um, after the union, that is when the association became on board later on. And so you would see in the early parts mm -hmm. of, or you would see a football and you would see the um, football union. It used to be the Castries Football Union. Mm -hmm. Then it became the Central Football Union, and later on it developed into the Central Football Association. Okay. So a lot of the instruments were like, or, or, or the sports were like that. Okay, uh, we're due for a very quick break, so stay with us. You're watching Issues and Answers. I'm here with Mr. Patrick Mathred, the Director of Sports in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Oi. Hey. You yeah, realize you step on my toe. Well, do something about it. Uh. Gasai, bust him down. Man. Hold on. If somebody try to cross you, Hold on. and if my things start to take you, Hold on. no need for war or violence, cause the police there to help you. Hold if a trouble start in this session, alright, no need for aggression. Hold on. We don't want no violence in the place. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Control your temper, right. respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper. Respect each other. Don't, do Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper. A message from Mission Boys, Studio 758, Acid Creations, and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. From Kevin, he used to give me a lot of stories. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm here with Mr. Patrick Mathre, the Director of Sports in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, and we're talking about the history of the sports sector as well as the history of the Ministry of or the Department of Sports. Uh, so before we went for the break, you were speaking about the uh, the football unions and such. Yeah, yes, uh, and so the, as I indicated, um, that was one of the associations that developed in uh, at that time, mm -hmm. um, and and because of the reach of football, we were able to do um, a lot more to reach out. Now, a lot of the associations developed in that similar manner, mm -hmm. where you had the major areas, which was Castries, um, Rivalry, Viewfort, and they developed along the lines. Um, over the years, um, persons got involved in associations, and the ministry at the time forced them along the lines of becoming affiliated to international organizations. Mm -hmm. So now, as we speak now, we have 25 national sporting associations and every one of them being affiliated to international bodies. Mm -hmm. um, it helps from the standpoint that you're able to monitor what is happening um, on the outside, but monitor what's happening on the inside. Because um, I will tell you some years ago, the St. Lucia Olympic Committee in ensuring that, that um, associations were, 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 were in the, in, in, let's say in the right, in terms of, of what they were doing, had asked that in order to continue as a member of the SLOC Incorporated, that you should get a letter of good standing from your association, mm. um, your international federation. Um, and that's how it's referred to in terms of the, the Olympic fraternity um, federations. And so um, a lot of those federations would have gotten that. Um, some of them, um, um, of course, they fall by the wayside. They come up and they go. Um, one of the, the, the more interesting ones that, that um, maybe we not have time to speak about is, is, is actually martial arts. Mm -hmm. um, martial arts is very interesting because martial arts actually um, there was established by legislation the martial arts commission oh really yes um, and there was legislation on that um, in terms of the martial arts commission and everybody was to filter out into the martial arts commission at the time um, Mr. Dove I um, can't remember his first name now is that, that um, not, not former Oswald. PS that's Osbert Duve? Osbert Duve. Right. Yes, he was heavily involved in that and mm. he was the one pushing. Um, and, 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 and at the time, um, the, the, it was a wonderful concept, but it never um, um, developed in the way it was supposed to develop. And I, mm. I, I'll tell you why I believe that is the case. Um, and I think also that is why a lot of our sports in St. Lucia would have not developed um, to their full potential. And, and that is really because um, it's a double-edged sword in a sense, is the issue of voluntarism. Mm -hmm. um, persons come into this thing, they want to volunteer, they want to be part of it, and so um, they, they, they willingly give up the time. But guess what? As we, as we turn around on the other hand now, the time that they give up, sometimes they're not appreciated, but even then you need to go the extra mile. And so as we develop in the terms of a history of sports, you, you cannot really depend on volunteers. Yes, you need yes. people who are full-time in this thing. You need people who have the time. But more so, you, have, you need people who that is their responsibility. Mm -hmm. And once it is their responsibility that you expect them to do so, it's difficult to say to a volunteer, 
that you're volunteering, um, but you know, you, let's do it. And the volunteers mm. can say, but I just, I, I, I just yeah, volunteer. He, he just doesn't have the time. You understand? Yeah, yeah. But if you're full, fully employed, you're not doing your work, then there's recourse. Mm. So um, you know if you're a worker employed in an institution, you don't do it, then we know exactly what happens with you. And I think that is, that is what we have to look at seriously in terms of, of, of sports and the history. And you will notice mm. then that a number of the sporting organizations who have developed in Central and gone one step ahead are really those who would have necessarily have an office, a structure. And, and again, I refer to football. So mm. you have an office. Um, mm. Persons may argue that, um, well, football have money. Um, <laughs> people argue football have money. But football has money because they grew football. Mm -hmm. Maybe f um, 20, 30 years ago, the popularity of football was not, was not was like not that. Is, and yeah. so the FIFA now took a deliberate effort to grow the game and to announce afterwards, since we have grown the game, uh, we're making a lot of money from TV rights. They have their own station and mm -hmm. their own studios. Mm -hmm. Then they're able to give back. And I'm saying this is an example that can be done throughout the world with all the sports. Maybe they may never become popular as football, but every single sport have the potential to grow to that extent. And in some cases, you have um, 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 those sports throughout the world who have grown. We don't play hockey in Central, but mm. hockey is massive. Mm -hmm. American football exactly. is massive. Exactly. And I am saying lacrosse, for instance, is mm. a massive sport throughout the world. And I'm saying those sports, although some of them like lacrosse, for instance, we don't have in St. Lucia, I am still saying that if you're able to professionalize the sport, and, and, and this is where I want to go in terms of our history, the St. Lucia Football Association, um, when I became president, did a deliberate program which we call the professionalization of football. Mm -hmm. It was something offered by FIFA to all of the, 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 um, the associations throughout the world, the federations, and so we took the opportunity. Um, you get training on how to run an organization, on, on um, the whole history of financing, how to run an office, um, how to develop a, a program and a, a plan. And we were out in a workshop for an entire week and I'm saying this is the next step for, for us in St. Lucia in terms of the history of sport. We need to start to professionalize every single sport so persons could see exactly what it is. Um, and, and again, we have reached a point in our history where we were recognized um, throughout the world. And this is when we started to do well in sports. Mm -hmm. um, and persons started to, 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 to speak to us in terms of, oh, St. Lucia is doing well. That's the time, the 1980s, um, we had the OECS, we mm -hmm. dominated the OECS. Mm. Football, we dominated um, volleyball, and we dominated table tennis, we dominated netball. St. Lucia was on top of the world That's in terms of the That's all throughout the 1980s. Yeah, up, right up to the late 1980s into the early 90s. Mm. We were on top. We were kings of the, of the Caribbean. I remember it's around that time that Jamaica, St. Lucia and Jamaica, uh, St. Lucia drew a match. And every time Jamaica had a football match, they were shooting in their boots because <laughs> that little St. Lucia is coming for them. It was really for us a time where we were developing. And of course, what happened to us? The rest of the world caught on. Uh -huh. The rest of the world caught on. And they say, oh, whatever is happening in Central is good. So they were coming, they were studying us, they were doing what it is. And then now when they realize that um, we've caught up with them now, they move one step, which is the age of technology, where St. Lucia now is caught up, that we have not gone into that age of technology. We could change for us a history of what we're doing and to move us to the next era of sports. And so this is where I want to go now in terms of technology and sport and for us to move on as a nation, how we now use that technology to move on to the other aspect of sports. I even wonder if uh, our diet had anything to do with, with why we were dominating sports throughout that time. I actually remember there was a, a story a while back about uh, Hussein Bolt and the Olympic Committee and how they were complaining about how his diet was possibly different from all the other athletes around the world and they were talking about maybe perhaps banning some of the foods that he was eating from Jamaica. But uh, we're actually due for an, our second and final break, so we'll just come back in a, a little bit. You're watching Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. Stay tuned, we'll be back in a moment. Mm -hmm. Tout yeah, monde sait counseling, <laughs> counseling, counseling. Kite mo do bagay chance. Depuis moi fait, PS mon pas jamais counseling. Mon Glacia, just yesterday you asked me advice about your husband and we spent over an hour on the cell. Ça c'est counseling? Mon quoi c'est ça fait mon? Just think about it, Glass. When you have a difficulty with someone, you ask your friends for advice to help you to deal with your problems. But wouldn't you prefer getting advice from a professional counselor? Huh. I hope you're not one of those who think counseling is for crazy people. Mm. Mwen yon situasyon ki bien wè. Ek mwen bwizwen 
professional counseling. Mais Mani Lajan, il cher à condition doctor's visit. Eh, eh. Don't you know the Ministry of the Public Service has an employee assistance program they call it EAP, which is offering six free counseling sessions for government employees? Iglesia, why don't you take advantage of it? Really? It's free? Lend me your phone, let me call the EAP unit, ASAP. Because I want professional, did you say free? Free counseling. Boy, Iglesia, wow, who is the counseling, sir? Call the EAP unit at 468-2269. EAP works. Let it work for you. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm here with Director of Sports, Mr. Patrick Mathwin. We're talking about the history of the sports sector as well as the history of the, uh, the Department of Sports. So, um, yes, yeah, so we, we've, interestingly enough, we've, you've spoken a lot about uh, new, well, sports that would have been started maybe late in um, late on in the in the country's life like martial arts mm. in fact on another program you actually mentioned the development of esports so these are these are uh, sports that were not there before but we slowly developed over time can you talk about sports beforehand uh in saint lucia let's say what sort of sports were popular before the 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 launch of the ministry of youth development and sports what were people playing back then well, well basically people playing football cricket mm -hmm. Um, um, f netball has been around um, because people like um, the late Uralis Booty in the mm -hmm. 1960s, who was also famous for culture, was involved in, in, in netball. Um, and people, um, our history would not even say to us, a lot of people don't know the history, would say to you that in the complex just next door to us, there is a stand called the Uralis Booty Stand. Mm. Um, um, the, unfortunately, in Masha, um, we, we also had um, the, 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 the Masha um, court named after James Belgrave, who was also involved in sports. Right, right. Um, I know the contemporary times, persons may, may maybe recall um, James um, King. Mm -hmm. Well, King, Riggler, the Riggler King, Kenneth Riggler King, that's the gardens. But mm -hmm. people still refer to it as the gardens. As a garden, so yeah. um, also a popular, well, I wouldn't say popular, but at the time we used to play a lot of it, was, um, was lawn tennis. And at the time it was known as lawn tennis. Mm -hmm. um, it is no longer referred to as lawn tennis. Um, because the fact is that you play it on different surfaces. So it's just referred to as tennis. Mm -hmm. So there's tennis and there's table tennis. Um, table tennis, for instance, um, there was a lot of um, playing of table tennis at the, at the police barracks. And with the police club, a lot of those persons were into, into sports. So table tennis, tennis. Um, the, the, at one time, we did try our, back, our hand at, at, um, at hockey. That mm -hmm. didn't really stay too long. Yeah, yeah. And of course, swimming has been around for, for a, a long time. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the times, those, those, um, a lot of those sports too were confined to particular sectors of persons. So, so the popularity of, of footballers, because Every, it was seen as a ghetto yeah. sport, everybody mm -hmm. could play um, um, football. So it was all over the place. Some of the other sports, you um, persons who argue, okay, let's, 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 um, let, 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 let us see if we could try something. I could say to you, for instance, volleyball. Mm -hmm. um, and volleyball um, came about in the late 19, 1970s, 1980s, and was introduced by a set of peace corps who came to St. Lucia mm -hmm. with the late John Odlum again. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, re it, it, it continued to rise in Cicero because John Odlum was the, was the parliamentary rep for that area. Right. And so it developed there. And so coming out of that in the 1980s again, there about there, that is where the Cicero Seagulls was born. Mm -hmm. And the Cicero Seagulls was known for volleyball throughout. Mm -hmm. um, and later on, when persons like myself joined the club in, in um, 1983, there about, um, we continued the tradition. But, but what happened to uh, Seagulls, for instance, and what's happened to a lot of our sports clubs, um, a lot of our sports associations is that there is an, uh, a spirit that's, 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 that always exists, that person's enthusiastic and they want to play and they want to do it. But as a club, you need to nurture that spirit. And in as much as you play the sport and you do things, you need to continue to nurture that spirit and, and, and to e encourage persons to, to ensure that that spirit lives on. And I think Cicero Seagulls, that is one of the things that happened to it, that um, we, we, we were not prepared to what happened to us. Because I could tell you, um, in the, in the um, early 90s there about, well, mid 90s there about, we lost two of our members in quick su succession. Mm. Um, and those were two vibrant members. Mm. Where I'm, I'm, I'm talking about um, Guy Brown, mm. 
mm -hmm. um, who later on now, because of his work in volleyball in the club, we have the Guy Brown Memorial Tournament by the Volleyball Association, right. and another individual, Herbert Fede, who was just an enthusiastic young man. And after those persons, the spirit of the club started to fade and win. And a lot of people were just very troubled by that. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we never thought about doing counseling and doing this. Mm -hmm. And so those are the kind of things that we need to do. And that's why I'm saying you need to professionalize the sport so that not just the clubs and the associations, but people generally who are volunteers could understand that there is something in it that we could do. We could take it as a profession. We could take it as a vocation. But there's a lot of potential that we've not recognized as yet. So what about, um, let's say, community sporting? How has that um, aided the country? How has that developed the country? It, it hasn't as far as you get a heavy, um, heavy involvement. Um, one of the things, for instance, the ministry had tried um, some time ago was what we call a junior sport program. Mm -hmm. And that was a very interesting program. Mm -hmm. It was funded by the St. Lucia Olympic Committee at the time, where every Saturday, you had a number of spots um, where persons would be would come there from about 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock for two hours to practice a sport. And we'd, 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 we took 12 to maybe 14, 15 year olds to get them involved. So there's netball, there's cricket. Mm -hmm. And it was just a lovely side because um, we also indicated from the ministry standpoint that we needed to utilize our playing fields. Because on a Saturday you pass and you see every plane field empty and you wonder if people don't play on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Now it is coming back slowly. On a Sunday, we need to get people back onto our playing fields. And it will help in the whole situation with, with all the diseases that you have, sad diseases. We need to get people back on, 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 onto the playing fields. Mm -hmm. Now, we've spoken extensively, obviously, about um, the history. Where do you think we are moving forward with the sports sector? I think um, generally in the sports sector, there is a lot of potential. And, mm -hmm. and I suppose in the next forum, I said that this is the next major industry for St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. But we have to look at it in a deliberate sort of way. For the longest while, we have looked at sports as a by the way something. And you will play sports, mm -hmm. you know, and you would. And right. even that was reflected in even government policies because it was always a ministry of something and youth development right. and sports. And so when we recognize that youth and sports could stand on its own and to develop as a ministry, then we start to recognize that sports as an industry has potential. I think we have to pay more because mm -hmm. um, in terms of sports because sports tourism is huge. Mm -hmm. We look at the ARC and you see what the ARC is doing for it. It's a sport. Sailing is a sport. So I am saying to you that there are other ways in which we could now develop. We have started with our history to try to change some of our facilities around to accommodate that international level. When Darren Sami came out, everybody wanted to come and play cricket at Darren Sami. Right. It is now time for us to revisit the Darren Sami grounds, to refashion it in a more modernized era, and to bring persons in again in terms of not just our local persons, but sports tourism. More importantly for me, I think that we are, we are lagging behind in terms of technology. Mm -hmm. We are lagging way behind. And we now have to start to develop a cadre of young persons, or even older persons, but persons generally, a resource base where we could use the technology. You sit and you see a, 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 a cricket match, for instance, and you see some fellas by their computer. They're not playing solitaire, you know. <laughs> they are, uh, contrary to what people think, they are actually <laughs> watching the game, um, seeing what it is, taking stats, analyzing, and they're coming back to change. We are back with that. And so this is what we need to do in all of the sports. Use the technology, use the stats that we have been generating to ensure that we move from where we are to the next step. We could catch up, and we could catch up very quickly, but it's just a question of getting there in the way that we need to get there. That's very good. Um, you're clearly one of the more passionate um, <laughs> followers of sports and administrators in the sports sector. Um, I honestly think that you should sit down and just write an entire book whenever it is that you, you have the chance, because there's a lot, you're a resource of information. There's a lot that you can teach people about uh, the history of the country, especially uh, with regards to sports. But I want to thank you for coming on our program. We've come to the end of our show. I hope you can come again <laughs> to speak about any, any um, subject under the sports umbrella. Pleasure. You're watching Issues and Answers. I'm your host, Jacques Hingson Compton. Please stay tuned to more content from the government of St. Lucia and the National Television Network.